Hi everyone, welcome to today's Facebook Live with uh, Paul's Kitchen and Swan. Today, we it's the first one back after the new year, hope you've all had a great time. You are well rested, possibly eating a few too many calories. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little healthy kickstart and we are celebrating um, Veganuary, which is trying to eat a bit more of a plant-based diet for January, cut out some of the meats, cut out some of these sort of heavy fats that meats might bring and trying something a little bit lighter. So I've got some great recipes today for you. I've got um, a lovely cauliflower dish, I've got a great curry and some aubergine. I'm gonna show you how to make a mayonnaise. And the mayonnaise is made out of chickpea water. So I don't know if you've seen that before. I've demoed it once before, a long time ago, but I'm gonna show you that again. So first thing we're gonna do is start with the curry. So we're gonna do a wonderful chickpea curry with spinach, so I've got some onions, I've got some tomatoes. You keep an eye on that, Julie. You can see that lovely spinach that's ready to wash. And I've got some chickpeas. There we go. So I'm gonna give the chickpeas a good shake. I'm just going to open that and explain Right, see that water in there? That is what we're gonna make the mayonnaise out of. And all we're gonna do is I'm just gonna drain my chickpeas, like so. And all I'm gonna use for the um, mayonnaise later in one of the recipes is that liquid there, which is what they call aquafaba. Now aquafaba is a protein given out from the chickpeas and beans and pulses, and it's sufficient to be the same as like when you use an egg white, so we can, or an egg, so we can use that aquafaba to make a mayonnaise. You can use it for meringue, and you can use it as an egg substitute for cakes. There's lots of recipes out there online. Have a look, it's a great idea, it's a great way to substitute egg. Let us know where you are today, say hello. Um, on the phone today is my lovely wife, Julie. Have, say hello, Julie, for me, please. Hi there. So if you've got any questions, fire them away, and we'll make the start on this curry. Yeah, we've got Claire Shard joining Jeanette Reeve, uh, Valerie Swarbrick, Carol Ride. Good morning to you all. Thank you for joining. So, instead of using uh, oil or butter, I'm going to use this coconut oil for the curry. It's a nice flavour. Very great for curries. Look at that. Now what you can do is, it's normally solid, but if you warm it in the oven, you see how I've turned it liquid? Yeah. It's easier to use, especially if you're coating things. So what I'm going to do is put some coconut oil in there. If you can't find coconut oil, just use a vegetable oil or a sunflower oil, that would be great. Hi from Julie Summary and Hi, Rachel Julie. McDonald. Oh, lovely. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you're going to try these uh, vegan recipes for me. So I've got that oil heating up. I'm just going to dice an onion and this is going to be the base of my curry sauce with this chickpeas so always remember keep the root on slice but not all the way through and that is where you keep it held together turn the onion slice the other way and there you have a very quick professional diced onion I mention it all the time but it's great to recap keep an eye on that too, Now, have a look over here. I've got my oil getting hot. So what I want to do with that is I want to put in my spices. I want to start popping them and toasting them. I don't want it too hot, but I just want to release them flavors. So we've got coriander seeds, cumin seeds. I've got star, um, cinnamon, curry leaves, turmeric, ground cumin, chili flakes. You'll see when I add them there, they'll all start to toast and pop. And that way I'm releasing all them gorgeous flavours before I add my onion. Now look at that. See that? It smells great. It's the flavours, the aromas that that's going to come off there and impart in that curry is amazing. But you don't want to burn them. Spices can burn. That's enough. You see how it's just starting to pop and tickle there? Yeah. Then I'm going in with my onion. And that way it's going to bring the temperature of the pan down. 
and it's not going to burn. So all I'm going to do with that now is I'm just going to let them soften, sweat them down. So those spices were only in literally for like a minute or two? Not even, that. yeah, a maximum a minute. Just all I want to do is give them a little toast. Now it's just sitting gently frying, them spices are going to be great. What's really great in curries is they have a great base, which is based of ginger and garlic. It's the powerhouse of the flavour. And what I've got here is equal quantities of ginger and garlic. I've got some just vegetable oil in there. Janet Robinson said a good tip, read the aquafaba, because her husband's allergic to egg. Perfect. Try it. It's a great, honestly, when you see me make this mayonnaise later, you'll be amazed. I've got a little bit of dash of water in there. I'm going to put my garlic in. Cut my ginger down. Now, I have ginger two ways. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, you'll know I'll always have some ginger in the freezer. We have a little look. Should have some in there. Yeah, there we go. Rock solid. Perfect for grating. So when you grate ginger, it grates really easy. Watch this. Comes out like snow. Mm -hmm. And I'll see the other way is if I want to puree it, I have it nice and fresh like this. But I'm going to show you a great hack on how to peel. You peel by using a spoon. All you do with the back of the spoon, and you just scrape like that. It's the quickest way. You don't want to be using a knife and wasting all that ginger. If you watch carefully, it's the quickest way to peel, nice and easy, you get in all the nooks and crannies, and that way is a great hack on how to peel ginger. So I'm going to put the rest of the ginger in here, like so, and I'm going to blend this in my blender to make my lovely ginger and garlic puree. A little bit more water in there. There we go. Good little blender that. Great blender. My swamp blender. Have a look on the website. There'll be some great deals on there. So there we go. Now look at that. You look at that, Julie. That is my ginger and garlic mix. Now this is great, it's got oil in so it will last a long time. That will last in your fridge for about a week. So you can use it for many things, it's great. I wish you could smell it. It's got an amazing flavour. Now this will bring real power to a curry with aromat and flavour. So now I'm going in with a couple of... So this can be the base for any curry, meat, yes. vegan, fish. You'll you know, find that a lot fish. of Indians use this for all the curries of base. My onions are softening now, I'm going in with my garlic and ginger. And then you'll, I mean, Julie, you can smell this, but yeah. you can imagine if they knew, knew what that was like. Turn that down, and that's still softening away. That's really, really delicious. I'm gonna turn on to my aubergine now. So, nice aubergine. I'm gonna slice up. This is gonna be, I guess, what you might be the substitute for your meat, you know. This Quite chickpea, a meaty vegetable, it is. isn't it? This chickpea curry, I guess you would probably normally use some chicken or some lamb or possibly some fish, but because it's vegan, we're gonna use this wonderful Aubergine. I think people are funny about aubergine and how to cook it, aren't they? They say it's a, it's a struggle. I'm going to do some lovely tikka. So I'm going to spread each side with my garlic and ginger mix and that oil, and that's going to impart straight into that and give it some gorgeous flavour. Right? Yep. I'm going to let that marinate for a few minutes. And then I'm going to go in, like you would a tikka, with some tikka paste and some yoghurt. But of course, with it being vegan, I'm using a vegan-based yoghurt and I'm using a plant-based coconut flavour because I want these coconut flavours to be running through with the coconut oil and the yoghurt 
It's going to add a lovely freshness to this dish. So, it doesn't take long, like so. And then that way, that is spreading the beautiful flavour of this ginger and garlic and oil into that aubergine. Mm -hmm. Now you have a look at that while I give my hands a good clean. That's good, I'll just check on the spices. They're bubbling away nicely. Lovely colour in there. Go. Now I'm back. So we've got some spare ginger and garlic here. In case I want to add a little bit more to the curry. Yep. I've got my aubergine sitting marinated and lovely. Yep. I've got my chickpeas. I've got my spinach. Onions are great. Yeah. I'm going to go in with my tomatoes now. So, got some nice diced tomatoes going in. So, I've got some lovely tomatoes going in there. That is going to be the base of my sauce, which is delicious. That's going to simmer away now for about 10 minutes. I'm going to make my marinade and cook my lovely aubergine on my great contact grill. I use this for everything. Cheese toasties, cooking steaks, cooking sausages. You've seen me use this before. It's a great bit of kit. I'm going to grill off my aubergine and it's going to be delicious. So, my next marinade, because it's a double marinade for this aubergine, is just very simple. It's just equal quantities of plant-based yogurt. So is it coconut yogurt? This is a coconut-based yogurt. So it's soya base. It's in every supermarket. There's some great stuff out there at the moment. There's loads of great vegan stuff. Got my tikka paste. Equal quantities of tikka and yogurt. I'm just going to give that a great mix. So this is the same mix you would use for a meat if you were using yeah, meat? Yeah, I would use the same style and technique if I was doing it for chicken, lamb, or fish. But it's because it's vegan. Any other vegetables you think you can do great with for it? things like um, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, courgettes, peppers. It lends itself to everything really. Look at that, gorgeous. Plenty on there. Give them a flip over. And that's going to get amazing flavour through there. And this aubergine has got this, you know, you mentioned it before, it's got a great meatiness to it. And it is really good for you. And I think you're right, people are scared to cook aubergine, they don't know what to do. But yeah, a lot of people said it goes soggy or they just If you master don't. cooking aubergine, it's wonderful. One thing you don't want to do with aubergine is boil it or gently simmer it or s in a pan. You want to roast it. You want to reduce that liquid in there. You want to grill it. You want to get some good, strong, high heat on there and that will give it a great flavour. That will get rid of some of that water. And have a look in there, Julie. That curry is coming down. It's a quick curry. It doesn't have to be on long. Yeah. I'm going to go in with my chickpeas. I don't seem to be getting any messages That's from okay. anyone. If there's so. any questions, we will answer them as we go. Sometimes Facebook doesn't like the, us and it sometimes stops it. But I do get your questions. I will answer them later. So there we go. We've got some wonderful chickpeas, curries, and that's just slowly um, just simmering down, just putting some heat through that chickpeas, intensifying the flavour, and that should be amazing. Right, let me put my grill on. And we can look at cooking. Here we go. We can look at cooking our aubergine here. Get that out of the way. My lovely bowl. This is what I'm going to serve it on. So, we're going to do a lovely curry. We're going to do the nice aubergine and grill. So, my contact grill is heating up nicely. I've got a little bit of the melted coconut. 
which I'm just spreading a little bit on. That's going to help stop it from burning and add a bit more flavour. A little bit of fat, which is good fat, coconut oil is very good for you. And then as soon as that's hot enough, I'm going to get that coconut on the grill. So it's preheating. I've got my washed spinach, which is going to go in my curry. Buy the washed spinach, it's a lot easier. It, and once you have your spinach in, you literally can turn off the heat and let that wilt carefully into the curry. The heat of that will just soften that spinach or keep it lovely and green and keeping as much nutrients in that as possible without it going too brown, losing all that lovely vibrance and we'll keep that lovely freshness into that. And go in with a bit of salt. A nice season, a bit of pepper, and that does really smell amazing. I'm just going to put a little bit more coconut in there. There we go. And look how this, look how this spinach is wilting down now. See it? See how it's staying nice and green, but it's softening up. That's exactly where we want to be with our spinach. Don't overcook your spinach. If you are using frozen spinach, add the spinach at the very end. Defrost it first if you can, and then add it at the very end just so you're keeping that lovely freshness. Right, let us grill nice and hot now. Let's grill our aubergine. Let's grill our. That smells amazing. Get the aubergine on there. And we'll get that grill down. And that's going to help me cook it from both sides. Look at that gorgeous steam. That's going to, you can hear it, it sounds amazing. Have a look at this curry as well. See that, look at that. This is so vibrant and so fresh. It's such a great way to eat without needing meat. Now, be careful with this. Just have a little double check. Yeah, see, look, it's getting a lovely colour without being burnt. That's happy, that's happy. I'm going to get some coriander now, ready for the curry. Nice bit of coriander. Just going to chop that up, like so, that's going to go on top of the curry. Can we have another look at the aubergine? Oh yeah. Look at that. That's great. See that? Yeah. A little bit more. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to give it some colour and if you look, you see how it's starting to soften? Get a little turn, let's show you underneath, look. It's not burning, yeah? These grills are awesome for this sort of stuff. And you can feel this softening just really amazingly. Why do you flip them when it's a... I'm just flipping them just side. so you can see the colour underneath. Ah, right. And you can see the lines. Yeah. There's no need to flip them. The good point about this grill is it cooks on both sides. Top and bottom, I'm just showing you what it's like on the other side. These grills don't burn if you are uh, just nice and steady away. It makes a great finish in your food. Just going to put half my coriander in here. So the heat's off now, isn't it, on heat's that? It's off, it's still red hot. Curry's all wilted, not the curry. Look at that, the spinach, it's absolutely amazing. Look at that, and that, that is ready. It's off the heat, it's sitting gorgeous. Yeah. These are nearly ready. Ooh, I'd say they're ready. Yeah? Yeah. Good. All I'm going to do with this is just brush with a little bit of coconut oil. Now if you listen to these, listen. They're crispy on the edges. They are not. You know when sometimes you think aubergine can be really sort of flabby and a bit sort of watery? Yeah. These aren't. We have cooked these perfectly Reduce the water, it's got all that gorgeous flavour going through it. 
and I'm going to, have to dress up my plate. So we've got an amazing curry going in there. This is a great dish to make for packed lunches as well, isn't it? Great. You know, uh, you know, for the week. There's no reason why you can't uh, meal prep ahead. That's a big thing at the moment. People meal prepping. You could do this on a Sunday. You've got it enough for the whole week. This does it easy, good four portions. I've got my aubergine going on now. Get some spoons. Gorgeous aubergine, layered up. Like so. And this is a wonderful, healthy meal. It looks amazing. The colours, don't you think the colours are incredible? Yeah, not bad. And there it is. All right, we've got um, all of the... Um, That's okay. So somebody's wanting to ask, what is the um, the machine called? This, this is Swan's, I think it's officially a contact grill. If there's someone in Swan's listen, please put a message out there, let them know where to get them from. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, we use this for everything. It is the official cheese toasty machine of the house. Whatever night, you can always smell that cheese cooking as my son, he sort of lives off them. Um, it's great for cooking meat, sausages, fish. You've seen the restaurant quality vegetarian dish coming off there. It's quick and easy. Have a look online. I, I, they've always got great deals on this sort of stuff. So Juliet's asking, can she do her zucchinis on there to make them crispy? She said hers always go a bit soggy. It's perfect for that. Courgette, thing. isn't it? Zucchini, yes. yeah. So because you are doing courgette and you're getting heat from both sides, top and bottom, come and have a look at the grill again. So because you are using the grill from top and bottom, both of these plates heat up. So you are cooking from both sides. And it's, you've got all these different, have a look here, Julie. We've got all these different sort of, uh, you know, heat. We've got shellfish, chicken, sausage, lamb, fish, burgers. It's great. You press it, it would reheat. It would uh, heat up. It preheats, it buzzes, it lets you know. Really good for things like vegetables. I really like cooking vegetables on it. It gives a great caramelisation. I mean, look at the colour on them. There's no And they're crispy, aren't they? Crispy on the edges. There's no horribleness on that. I mean, for me, that's a great way. I'm going to see if there's a chilli in the fridge. Show you how to finish it. Um, Carol's asking, a member of her family is vegetarian, yeah. not vegan, but is allergic to soy, dairy and mushrooms. Do you have a sub suggestion of what could be a, um, a good substitute for the yoghurt? Well, for the yoghurt... Yeah, you can get coconut-based, uh, plant-based yoghurt. Just keep away from the soy. So have a check in every container. Some of them are um, soy-based, some of them are oat-based, some of them are coconut-based. So stay clear of the soy-based stuff. It's the same with the uh, vegetarian and vegan milk. There are soy ones, keep away from that. But look at the oat ones, look at the pea protein ones, look at the coconut ones. There's plenty out there. It is absolutely amazing choice so you should have no problem of finding something that is perfect for you um as what was the other question the soy and it's just wanted a substitute for the yogurt because her member of her family is allergic to soy dairy and mushrooms yeah so obviously dairy we're not using because it's vegan um oat is probably your easiest and most varied um way to get your milk your dairy in there as uh, dairy substitute but definitely um Coconut yogurt, there's loads out there. If you can't find that instead of the coconut yogurt, what you can use is a soft, uh, I don't know, it's soya bean, I was going to say tofu, but uh, that's soya as well. So that's great. Sometimes I put a little bit of chili on top, but that is our lovely vegan chickpea and onion curry. It's really flesh. It's got amazing flavour from all the spices. It's got a little bit of heat, but not too much. We get a really nice, varied amount of spices. My aubergine, do it outside. Look, it's soft, it's cooked, it's juicy, but not watery. Yeah. It's got a lovely crispy on the edges. It's got amazing power flavour from that garlic and from that tikka paste. Amazing. Yeah, it's got like a bit of a flesh sort mm. of texture, hasn't it? Um, Dottie's on. Hi, Dottie. Hi, she Dottie. wants to know, will a vegan-based yoghurt separate more than a normal-based yoghurt? No. They're no. very heat-stable, Dottie. Um, 
they're as stable as a dairy based yogurt you can cook with them um, they're, they're, they're probably I would say a little bit more stable um, and not even now when it comes to if you go to a coffee shop and you're using um, sort of the barista style um, milks you can get a just as good a sort of foam on your cappuccinos as you can with um, with full fat milk or dairy milk so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. I'm going to have another slice of this. This is really good. Yeah. There's lots of questions. Obviously, these have just come in. Oh, okay, let's buy um, So we'll have... There's lots of people saying hello. Um, someone, Jen saying she's just bought that blender. She thinks oh, it's nice. really good. Uh, Diane wants to know if you're going on safari after today's demo. Uh, my dude, do I look like I'm going on safari? <laughs> yeah. Um... And yeah, I think I think that's it. So if there are any other questions, you'll get online afterwards and answer them. Uh, Jeff wants to know about have you a top tip for growing a moustache? Yeah, uh -huh. make sure it looks good like this. Trim it not too much. Keep it nice and moist. And Neil Wright wants to say, please don't fat shame the aubergines. No, I won't. <laughs> I think there's a lot of humour this Sunday morning. I isn't like I? a bit of humour. I'm hoping you like that. I'm going to have a quick clean down while Julie looks at our delicious dish, and then we're going to move on to our next. Yeah, I might even I might even have a little taste, actually. Let's get, move this out of the way. Little clean. We should have an interlude now of you just eating that. Mm. Mm, the aubergine is really good. It's amazing, don't you think? Yeah. So, nearly there, guys and girls. This next one is quite amazing. So, what are we doing next? Next, we're going to do my cheeky plate on. A KFC style cauliflower, bear with me, cauliflower buffalo wings. Okay. Now that seems. Is it called an oxymoron? I'm not sure. I'm not sure anyway. That seems a bit of a. a bit of a first, definitely hard to say. But what we're going to do is make some KFC style pieces of cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Another way. Right, okay. And I'm going to make a great mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. So this is... Have a look at all the ingredients there and I'll go through them. Here's some flour. And in the flour, I've got some spices. So I've got some celery salt. I've got some garlic powder. I've got some onion. I've got some paprika smoked oregano. And I've got some flour. Some salt. Like so, and I've got some pepper. So there is my secret spices. Not so secret because I'm letting you in on it. And by the way, they're probably the definitely in the KFC secret spice mix that nobody knows about. What I'm going to do with that is give them a little mix together. Uh, Rachel's asking if these recipes are available afterwards. They're all on Swan's yeah, um, page, they're all on aren't my they? Yeah, my Facebook page. Swan will be sharing it. All the recipes, you can replay the video over and over again. Um, they are definitely on there. And if you can't find them, drop me a little message and I'll direct you to them. So there's my flour mix there, okay? That's my lovely spice mix. We have some vegan milk. have some more spices going there, some corn flour, I've got some hot sauce and I've got some cider vinegar. So all I'm going to do is put about a tablespoon of cider vinegar in there. I'm going to put some hot sauce in there, a couple of tablespoons, tablespoon, whatever you want. All my spices are going there, they're the same spices that was in this flour. That's all going in there. And then my corn flour. Now this is what's going to coat the flour onto the cauliflower. So when you, if you are making a KFC or with chicken, you normally use milk or buttermilk and that will help coat the flour onto the chicken. Now you need that to coat onto the chicken because when you dredge it through the flour that's what gives it that lovely crispiness when you fry it off. Now you can use this as an air fryer by the way 
I think Swan do an air fryer. Um, I'm using a deep fat fryer because I haven't got an air fryer and I like lots of fat. So if you want, if you're healthier than I am, use an air fryer. You can also grill these. You can bake them in the oven. You can do all sorts like that. But for me, it's going to be in the fryer. So is your cauliflower pre-cooked there or raw? Yeah, so what I've done with this is I've got my little cauliflower. Imagine these are my uh, like chicken wings. And I've cooked them for two to three minutes and just let them go cold. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip them into my liquid. One at a time. So dip them in there, yeah. And then I'm going to put them in my flour, like so. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Let that flour stick onto that mix. So while I'm doing that, you can see that this cauliflower is going to be soaking up all that flavour. It's going to have that lovely crispy coating for the flour, but more importantly, all these flavourings that's gone into that vegan milk and then I'm going to just turn it around like so yeah you see it's sticking yep but more importantly what I'm going to do is I'm going to then double dip so unlike when you're sharing your dips at home no one wants to double dip you have to double dip these you want an extra coating on there and what that's going to do is that's going to make it a beautiful, thick, crispy coating. So when I say if I double dip, once that's the first one on like that, go back in the liquid, and back in to the flour. Yeah, you can see this still a bit. You can see it's there. a bit thicker. Now mm. all I do is I just sit that on the flour like so, and what that does is we need that to set for ten minutes. Now what I mean by set is if you try to fry that straight away what would happen is all the flour would come off straight away what i want to do is i want that liquid to mix with the flour until it almost forms like a set batter on the outside that way when you put it in the fryer you won't lose all that flour and flavor it won't come off and you're left with just horrible pieces of fried soggy cauliflower you've got a lovely crisp edgy batter on the outside so do that this is my second dip that one's been done remember i'm not going to do all of it because there's no need to show you that then so rachel's asking could you leave the cauliflower in the mix for the first marinade not sure what, what? she means uh, no, because you want you don't want the liquid to be soaking all that first layer of flour off. Because if you if you then left it in that liquid, what could happen is the liquid would then overpower the flour ratio, and it would all fall off. So your best bet is to use a big tray like that, lots of flour in there, give it a gentle shake off, and that way that is crisp in the outside. Of. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put a timer on for 10 minutes. Because they need to sit there for 10 I minutes. I just want to let that sit for 10 minutes. That is going to set the outside up and make that really crispy. So there's my timer. 10 minutes. Go, stop. Here you can see. And if you have a look, you see how this first one I did, you see how it's starting to go a little bit more orangey. That's because it's soaking up, if you look, it's soaking up the flour, it's making that crust, it's not as white. So you might see a change colour like that, but they're perfect. They're going to sit amazing. I've got my fryer set to hot. So this is just sunflower oil. Like I say, if you want to use an air fryer, or you want to put it in the oven, what I would do is, once these are like that, hot oven, about 200 degrees, I would either dip in veg oil, or I'd spray with your one cal or whatever you use, or I'd dip in melted coconut, which would be delicious, but obviously not butter. Um, and then I would crisp them up in the oven. They probably take double the time, so you're probably looking at eight to ten minutes in a hot oven. That will give a very similar result. 
Okay, I have a lovely sweet and spicy finish to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss them off when they're finished in honey and chili. But what I'm gonna do now is show you how to do the mayonnaise, which is a bit scary. So we've got our chickpea liquid there, okay? Quick question before you go on from Janet. Yeah. How long and what temperature would you do them in an air fryer? F oh, you know what? I don't know about an air fryer because I don't have one. I would imagine if it's as similar to an oven, I'd do it at 200 degrees. And I would look at, say, six minutes. Do it a little bit less than you think. And then have a look. You want them golden brown. If you need them more, add a bit more time. Um, and then that way you can get to where you're at. But when you see them come out of the fryer... And you'll see the colour I want you to get. I want you to achieve a crispiness. It might be a little bit play and error. More importantly, please do them in your air fryer and let me see, because I'd like the information. Because at some point we'll get an air fryer, like everybody does, and it'd be nice to know. It'd be nice to send the picture in and then I can see what's happening. So, we've got chickpea liquid going in there. It's about 100 mils. And you can see it looks quite egg whitey, doesn't it? Yep. I've got some mustard going in there. Either Dijon or English. A couple of tablespoons of mustard. Make sure. And probably grain mustard would work as well. I've got some cider vinegar in there. 50 mils of cider vinegar. Where's my wizard? Get my wizard. And all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it on my wizard machine. Is that the correct name? Wizard machine blender. I'm just going to blend it. made it light and fluffy, giving it a good mix, put some air in there and now I'm going in with the oil. So all at once. 300 mils of oil. Now I didn't know if you could do this in the machine so I had a little tester yesterday and it did work. And then you blend it. Should the consistency should yeah, be like normal nice mayo. Thick mayonnaise, look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. How good's that? And look, you've got a beautiful thick mayonnaise. It's emulsified, gorgeous, look. Oh yeah, brilliant. What I'm gonna do Not now, too liquidy or no. anything, no. It's nice and thick. I'm gonna put some salt in there. <clears throat> Pepper. And then I'm gonna crush a garlic clove in there. Gonna grate some garlic in there. One clove of garlic grated. Yeah, Janet's saying, wow, that makes light of the whole mayonnaise making process without the risk. Look at that, doesn't it, Janet? And you know what? People who are allergic to eggs, people who um, want to make use of the chickpea water. What do you do with your chickpea water? Everybody throws it away. And look what you can do with it. Bit of garlic in there, bit of salt and pepper. Blend that. And there we have a really quick, easy mayonnaise. Sunflower oil, cider vinegar, garlic, bit of mustard, your choice on the mustard, 
The ratios are on there. It's roughly one can of chickpea juice. It's about 100 mils, 300 mils of oil. So one to three, and that's gonna make you the mayonnaise. And if you haven't seen me do that, you probably wouldn't believe that would work. But there we go, we've got a little So how long will this mayonnaise keep? I'll keep for ages. Really? Mm. So you can put it in an airtight jar airtight or something? Airtight container, you're gonna get at least a week out of that. What's gonna go off in it? There's no bad things to go off. They're all store cupboard items that has great life. So, got my lovely mayonnaise there. Got a couple of more minutes on my cauliflower and I'm gonna deep fry my cauliflower. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a bowl to mix my hot wings when they come out. So could you do that with aubergine, with sweet potato, with all things? You could do it with sweet potato, it would be great with courgette, you could do it with lots of vegetables. You, courgette you wouldn't have to cook off, but you would have to cook off your sweet potatoes or your butternut squashes or your pumpkins. You want to do it the same. You could do it with broccoli. Um, you can pretty much do it with everything. It's not so easy on pepper, because pepper's really shiny skin. It doesn't like um, the flour mix. It's hard for it to stick onto it, so I'd stay clear peppers. But definitely courgettes. The lady who did the zucchini, brilliant for that. Great for cauliflower, great for broccoli. But cauliflower, you know, lovely deep fried cauliflower, amazing. By the way, look, there's the uh, mayonnaise I did yesterday, the test mayonnaise. So it's still really thick, it doesn't split. That was yesterday's effort. I got that out just in case this one didn't work, but I should have more faith because I know it does work. So I know I've done it twice. Please try it. You will definitely, definitely enjoy it. Right, these cauliflowers, come and have a look. So you can see how they're going more red and that's because that batter is now starting to stick and it's just becoming a bit thicker and if I could feel them, the edges are starting to dry out. Now, if you don't let them sit in the flour you had and you put them on a plate, what would happen? The underneath would all be stuck to your plate. So you use that flour as a little bit of a safety net to stop it sticking to the plate and you have bald spots on your cauliflower. No one likes a bald cauliflower. There we go. Uh, quick question from the last demo from Dotty. Yeah. When you use the ginger from the freezer, obviously the skin was on it, do yeah. you have to peel the ginger? No. Do you have to peel the skin off or do you just grate it with it on? So what I do, Dotty, before I put my ginger in the freezer, I give it a good wash. I sometimes use an old toothbrush, I scrub it in case there's any dirt on there and I sort of pick off any dry, horrible bits and straight in the freezer. Once it's grated, you would never know. There's no problem, you can eat ginger skin. In fact, when ginger's really fresh and the ginger family like Gal and Gal, if in the Far East and in India, they'll always leave it on anyway. So you often see slices of ginger with the skin on. So yeah, don't worry about it. Give it a good wash. If you're happy and it's clean enough, it will work. It also stops it from freezer burning. So it protects the ginger. If you peel it, the liquid can freezer burn. Have you ever seen freezer burn? You know what I mean? So when it's in the freezer, it's got the horrible sort of white crust on food. It's no good. It's been burned, which means it's almost been like burned by heat but it's been air burned from the super cold and it'll stop it from doing that as well. Right, my stuff is ready. I'm going to put my cauliflower in my fryer. Carefully lower them in and you'll see them crisp right up. There we go, just give it a little bit more. There's my buzzer going off now, so gently drop in my collies. Like so. Watch your fingers. And they are frying, and we want them nice and crispy. We want a nice bit of colour on them. Leave them alone, just give them a tiny wiggle to stop them from sticking to the basket. But if I gently look, look, you see the crispiness? Yeah. You see it's already got that lovely coating? Yeah. They're not ready yet because I want them nice and golden brown. I want you to colour them the same as if you were having amazing Kentucky Fried Chicken. But this is KFC style buffalo cauliflower wings. A little play on words. 
But the great dip is a great vegan alternative. You can see you don't have to eat meat. I'm a meat eater, but I eat lots of vegetables. We've got meat free in this house all the time. So I'd urge you to give this a go. Embrace the January. Try these dishes. And you know, you've got some great things that you could go back to. And instead of using meat, you can be a bit more plant based. But hey, if you know what? If you want to do these recipes, they'll work perfectly well with meat as well or fish. So it keeps it really flexible. It gives you great ideas to use over and over again. Now come have a look. You see that in there? Oh yeah. It's getting real good colour. I mean, crispiness is off the scale already. Yeah. People love a little bit. I just need to get a microphone for the crispy test. Yeah, that looks fabulous. A little bit more. And we have a really lovely coating. Nice and crispy. Of course, the heat is also cooking the cauliflower. So when you did it for two to three minutes, you probably feel that it was a little bit still over, sort of raw. This is cooked in the cauliflower and you want to still retain a beautiful bite. You want it so it's got texture. Too many times vegetables are too soft. We want them soft sometimes, but other times we want them with texture and we want to have a bit of body behind it. So that's what these are going to do. Look at them now. That colour is outstanding. I think they're ready, do you? Yeah. So, let them drain all the extra oil off. A little shake. And like good buffalo style, we're going to hit them with a bit of hot sauce to coat them. We're going to hit them with a bit of honey to make it sweet and delicious. About a tablespoon of each. I'm going to hit them with some salt and pepper. And then I'm just going to gently, while they're hot and crispy, toss them off in my buffalo coating of hot sauce and honey. It gives a lovely finish to them. If you don't like it too spicy, leave the hot sauce out, but a little bit of honey is great. But that's crispy. They're so crispy still. Um, somebody's asking which oil is best for use in your fryer. Do you just use a vegetable oil? I use vegetable oil or my preferred is sunflower oil. So there we go. A nice little snacky dish that, isn't that, it? We had them last night for our tea when we were watching a movie. We had these as a little tester. I thought, ooh, let's try the cauliflower. Just refresh my memory of how we did it. We had a little tester last night. Amazing. So there is a wonderful... Vegan mayonnaise, using up your chickpea water, stuff you'd normally throw away. We've got a great KFC style crispy cauliflower buffalo wings with a lovely sweet sticky and hot dip. Use the cooling garlic mayonnaise to just balance that out. I can hear the crunch so um, they've got a good texture haven't they? That's so good. The flavours are amazing. I'm going to eat the rest of these, hopefully before Julie gets her hands in. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed uh, Paul's Kitchen Veganuary. We've got another one in a couple of weeks. I'll post what we're going to do. So have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time. That's from Paul's Kitchen and Swan. Thank you very much. Bye bye.